Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live here on YouTube, where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley Hurst, tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. And of course, there's going to be some art instruction sprinkled in there uh, as well. And tonight we've got a great challenge. Ashley's going to be doing the drawings. We're going to be using graphite pencil on white drawing paper. And uh, tonight we're going to unlock the mysteries of sketching, uh, so to speak. So, uh, Ashley, are you about ready over there? He's I am. Yeah, I am. We're going to talk about the keys to drawing today. So I hope you're excited about that. <laughs> and um, you might notice I'm looking a little bright today. We've already got the studio lights on. So I'm just about ready to go. I hope you are. The materials are simple. I, I have a number two pencil. I might use an ebony pencil at some point um, nearer the end. And then also just a pink pearl eraser. That's it. So get your materials and let's get started. Yes, Ashley is shining brightly tonight because he's <laughs> under the studio lights, which normally we just turn on after we switch cameras over. But we've got them on ahead of time anyway, because we're ready to go. And um, if you are watching this live on YouTube, though, I will remind you that you can ask questions and make comments during tonight's broadcast. And I'm going to be manning the chat box, so I'll be watching the chat box go by there. If you do put your comment or question, all capital letters, that, of course, is going to help me see it a little bit easier amongst all of the comments and questions, because sometimes that chat uh, that chat box gets rolling pretty quickly and if you put it in all capital letters that'll help me find it of course you can ask any questions that you want as long as they're art related they don't have to be about what we're doing tonight um and but they can be about what we're doing tonight obviously now before we get into things i want to remind you that um you, if you're brand new to the channel and you or you haven't done so yet subscribe to the channel um, and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post new videos. We do Getting Sketchy every week on Wednesday evening during our season. I think this is episode, is this episode six, five? I believe. It's five or six of this, this is season. This is my third drawing of the season. Okay. I think you started, so we should be on six. All right, so we go through 10 weeks and then we take a little bit of a break and then we'll start back up. But of course, uh, on the channel, I also post videos in between that as well, free instructional videos as well. So subscribe, hit the notification bell. We do have uh, a wonderful program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which is uh, the website. Um, and the membership program includes all of our drawing and painting courses. They are offered on a broad variety of media and subject matter. There's also weekly live lessons, which are a little bit different from Getting Sketchy. We go more in depth with those live lessons. Right now, Ashley is doing the series and we're working with oil paints, uh, doing a still life. But of course we cover a broad variety of different media and subject matter with the live lessons as well. Weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, a year long curriculum for visual arts teachers. All that is included uh, with the membership. If you wanna check out our membership program, there's a link in the description below. And everyone starts out with a free trial for a week. Um, and so you can go in and check out the program and see if it's right for you. If you just want to check out uh, three of our course videos and eBooks for free, you can do that as well. There's a link in the description below this video as well if you just want to check that out. Whew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we're about ready to go here. I think so. I've just been studying our composition a little bit. So uh, when you bring that up on the screen, we'll talk about it briefly and begin. All right. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to let Ashley take it from here. And then I'll start calling out everybody in the chat box. Everybody's telling me where they're from. I love the fact that you're doing that. And mm -hmm. uh, I will call that out in just a minute. But first, let's go ahead and switch over here. All right. So there they are, the keys to drawing. Well, they're not really the keys to drawing. They're just my <laughs> keys. That's in, fa in fact, that's my doorknob as well. So uh, if you've um, drawn along with me in the last few weeks, I've been doing sort of small everyday household objects, objects found around the house. And, and I've been looking for things that kind of go together as pairs. So we did, a, we did a set of plugs about four weeks ago, two weeks ago. I drew a nut and bolt that go together. And of course, keys and locks go together too. I'm starting to run out of pairs. So I may need some jet suggestions for you guy, from you guys. I'm not sure. I thought about peas and carrots, of course, but uh, that might not be <laughs> that interesting to draw. Um, so in any case, we're doing uh, locks and keys today, and um, there's a lot of value contrasts in here. I feel like value is really the key to drawing, value and proportion to drawing in a representational or realistic way. And um, there's not very much pure white in here, although there is a sort of a large 
a rectangle of light, or I'm sorry, a large triangle of light down here in the bottom, the bottom left, but not a whole lot of white. So I think I'm going to try to, I'm going to start drawing with lines, but I'm going to try to kind of shade early, um, more than, uh, more, a little bit earlier than I usually do. I've, I've got caught a few times um, feeling the pressure of the clock near the end of the 45 minute drawing, trying to get all the values in in just 10 or 15 minutes. So sometimes I spend a lot of time working on my lines and my proportion, and I'm gonna try to shade and refine that kind of as I go. So this, hopefully this drawing will kind of develop a little bit out of a cloud of shading um, as we go. So um, what do they say about voting? Uh, vote early and vote often. I think we're gonna shade early and shade often today. So we're gonna apply that uh, that joke to our drawing instead. So don't vote often. You're not really supposed to do that. You just vote once. I promise. <laughs> um, that's a good disclaimer there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, whenever you're ready to bring okay, up the um, timer, I, uh, if you want to think say anything I'm gonna, else about the drawing, uh, just I uh, just want to mention I'm going to start with the number two pencil, and it's a okay. regular. It's a writing pencil, but it is made by Ta Ticonderoga which is an uh, Dixon really, which is an excellent uh, pencil company. So I don't mind drawing with Ticonderoga writing pencils because the, the uh, lead inside is usually pretty consistent. And that's equivalent to about an HB. That's right, about like an HB pencil. Um, if I switch to, and I may not need to, but if I switch to the General's layout pencil, it's about like a 3B or maybe a 4B pencil, or you can use an ebony pencil if that's what you have made by a different brand. Yeah, a General's layout pencil is one of the best pencils. Yes, the they planet, are. They are. Opinion. All right, I guess we're ready. Let's go ahead okay, and bring well, up the let's timer. Bring up the timer then. And, oh, oh, I have one more thing to say. Okay, one more thing. I'll, I'm sorry. The timer. So um, the door knob itself is sort of circular, and it has a couple of circles in there. And then the key chain has a couple of circles as well, or uh, ellipses. They're a little bit tilted. And then part of the key chain that holds the two circles together, it has some rounder parts or ellipses too. So even though there's a couple of, of odd shapes there, right, almost right in the middle, slightly to the left of the middle, the keys themselves, there's a lot of roundness in circles or ellipses in here. And um, so I'm hoping that that uh, continuation of the circles across the composition in sort of a rhythmic way will sort of hold together or harmonize the composition. So that's something yeah. that I look for. Sometimes there's similar lines or edges or shapes um, throughout a composition to help hold it together. So just a tip for putting together still lives and things like that. And whenever you have yeah. repeating elements, you create visual rhythm. That's and right. That's, that's right. I can see that there. That's very good. All right, super. All right, now we'll bring up the time. Now we'll bring it up. 45 oh, gosh, minutes. there it is. There Go. It is. Dun, dun, Go. Dun. All right, let's see. Well, I'm going to just start with some general lines, I think, that capture the gesture of some of our parts. And like I said, I'm going to be shading pretty early in here. Um, so these lines will hopefully sort of disappear. Now, let's see. I do have an ellipse. I want to go ahead and find about where that's going to be. The front of the doorknob, of course, it is tilted. All right, so we got California, Montana, Holly Springs, North Carolina, Panama, uh, Oxford, the United Kingdom, Mobile, Alabama. Let's see, Syria, Copenhagen, Denmark, North Wales, Okeechobee, Florida, Alaska, India, Austin, Texas, Australia, Nether Australia, Brazil, let's see here, uh, Arizona, Belize, British Columbia, Canada, Georgia, Ontario, another Brazil, Texas, Chicago, been looking forward to this all day, thanks Jen, greetings from Texas, Quebec, Canada, Indiana, Minnesota, Denver, and this is a first live demo watch by Anita, so welcome <laughs> Anita. And another Sydney, Australia, there is Estelle there under her pen name. So glad to see there, see you there, Estelle. We know who you are. Um, and thank you for that. She says, thanks for all your hard work. It's much appreciated. Oh, super. Uh, let's see here. Washington, D.C., Germany, Italy, Southern California. Oh, Dana, I love Southern California. Love it, love it. Uh, Hi from Memphis, Idaho, Queens, New York. It keeps going. Atlanta, Georgia, another Brazil. Got a lot of people from Brazil. Uh, similar time zone, so imagine yeah, that, that, that kind of works sense. out pretty yeah. well there. Um, 
So um, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being here, Romania. Now, the paper you're working on, did you mention? I didn't. It's 60-pound um, sketch paper. So it's, okay. it's actually pretty lightweight. It has a medium tooth. And uh, it's good for what we're doing today. Um, but uh, like, like I said, since it is sketch paper at 60 pounds, um, you wouldn't really want to work it for hours and hours. You'd want to bump up to something more like 80-pound paper. So this is truly sketch paper. Uganda, Morocco. All over the world. Another Brazil. <laughs> Lots of people from Brazil. Oh, wow. Here this evening. So you started with just kind of a loose gestural. Yes, I started with these full ellipses up here. It's mm -hmm. mostly a lot of that's going to be obscured by these uh, these keys and this specifically this unusual key kind of mm -hmm. right in the middle. Um, but I want to go ahead and draw that whole thing in there just so hopefully I end up with a shape where it you know, disappears behind the keys and reappears. It feels like it it's, is, in fact, a continuous ellipse. So I, sometimes I like to draw... Um, overdraw or draw really more than we can actually see in the composition and just race the overlapped parts. And I see that your marks are becoming a little bit darker. I guess that's because you're more confident with the positioning of those elements. Ah, uh, that's, that's some of it. Yeah, that's some of it. When I draw a light also, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty loose. It's mm -hmm. pretty kind of scratchy. So some of these contours, I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit bolder. That doesn't mean they won't move around a little bit, but hopefully they won't move much. And we have a question here. Uh, Brent does art ask from a conversation I had today, which do you find more difficult to draw, fur or feathers? I would probably say fur because feathers often have a distinct sort of pattern to uh, a more distinct pattern to them they're well, so organized it's a good point and um I, I know that there are some objects that are you know more difficult to draw and i kind of want to put that in quotations because i feel like personally i feel like some objects are just more time consuming to draw not necessarily harder or easier just more time consuming i think a lot of times we we ascribe uh the term difficult well, we really mean it's just more time consuming. Right. Which that can, I guess, can raise the difficulty. That's a type of difficulty. Yeah. This, um, this unusual key in the middle is, is extremely uh, difficult to draw, in my opinion, um, just because of its, uh, <laughs> because of its uh, sort of strange orientation, I guess, right now. So take your time with that part. Well, I it looks like your outer contour is pretty right on. Um, really look at the odd shape in the middle. I think that'll help if you can make that out pretty well. What is that a key to? It's a key to like an industrial door to lock them down hmm. so that they can't be really opened or unlocked. And these are your keys, right? That's right. So do you have something hiding in an industrial complex somewhere? Um, sometimes we have uh, <laughs> teachers and students hiding in an industrial <laughs> complex that needs to be locked up nice and tight. That's what this so key that's is a school for. Key. Is it, this is a school key. Yeah. This locks down. It looks like the one to the left is also a school key. That looks like a classroom door That's right. Key. Yeah, that's right. That's I bet right. I know what room that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's every room. Every room? It's a master key. You have a universal? It's a master key. You really have a master key? That's right. Wow. I don't know. Power. I bet it says do not duplicate on it. It does. <laughs> But I'm going to give you a copy. And anybody else out there who wants a copy today, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we got some requests for perspective. Um, someone else asked that earlier. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. That's something we could definitely do on getting sketchy. I would love to do that. Yeah. I would love to do that. We might do Now, with a perspective, of... you have to go a little slower, you yeah. know. That's the only issue, but I... I mean, that's my favorite thing to do, really, is to, is to make up stuff that I can't see using linear perspective. Yeah, and that's really that's what a blast. perspective is best at, using it to draw okay, from imagination. See. Right. You, people are always excited to learn to draw from imagination, um, but not always excited to put the hard work into learning perspective, and they mm -hmm. really go hand in hand. 
Okay, we got uh, somebody else from Croatia, Nottingham, United Kingdom. And it's hard for you guys over there across the pond, as they say, because of uh, the time that we do this. But of course, these are all recorded and and posted on YouTube immediately after we finish. And that's the same thing. The same thing's true for the live lessons. It's not immediately with the live lessons, usually a day or two after. Um, and that's just kind of to, to refine the video a little bit and adjust the audio. Hopefully you can take out the uh, back of my bald head. I would appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry for that. Folks well, I can't edit this one too much. It's, it's I'm going to work on that. I'm right on YouTube. Stay back. I'm but you know what worked back. out perfectly is the shape of your head uh, was very <laughs> similar to the curvature of that uh, ellipse right it's there. All, so it's all harm. I was actually using it that. Ca yeah, it kind of looked like I moved my it. head up there <laughs> so I could then trace around it. No, I'm just it kidding. kind of a template, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, this little cluster at the bottom, and I'm treating it like a group. You can see there's another ring and a couple of keys, and I'm drawing it all like it's one one shape because there's really not any gaps or empty spaces mm -hmm. in there. So I think that's a good way to Very handle good. that. That is a good Try way to, to simplify. That. Yeah, simplify where you can. Now, I said I was going to shade early and shade often, and I haven't started that yet. So I think it's about time. Buddy, I see your comment here that you're not going to make it for the live session oh, after no. getting sketchy. So we'll miss you. And uh, it looks like Alana is giving you a wave there. So uh, I guess we'll see you next week. Virtually. That's right. Oh, well, Linda's from Fort Bragg. That's not too far mm -hmm. away. Thank you for your service there, Linda. Retired, R uh, retired Air Force. Not R Force. R Force. There you go with that pirate talk like again. Pirate again. <laughs> I'm retired from the R Force. So there's a lot of reflective shapes up here in this uh, in this doorknob, and I'm just trying to sort of find them and shade them at the same time. And there may be some a chance to kind of erase sections and, and refine those shapes uh, later in the drawing. But I don't know. I mean, it's just a, it's just a sketch. It's just a sketch. We may get to some some refinement, and we might not. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, and I'll just point this out. I, I usually point this out quite often, but I have it tonight. Um, you know, whenever you are creating a sketch, a looser sketch like this, or really anything, you're still exercising those artistic muscles that improve your drawing and painting skills. Um, and a lot of times we don't really notice improvement from one drawing to the next, but over time you do. And uh, that's why it's important to keep your drawings too. Don't throw away your drawings. Well, keep true. them in a safe place and put them away and then come back and look at them after a period of time where you've really, you've really been working to improve your drawing skills. And I don't mean like a period of time, like an hour. I mean, <laughs> like, like over uh, a few months or a year, yeah, months or years, and then go back and take a look at them. And you really see noticeable improvement. Drawing is a skill that really anyone can attain. It just requires a little bit of knowledge and a lot of practice. <laughs> And Hannah says, in September, I will attend a drawing course here in Copenhagen. You guys have inspired me. Fantastic, Hannah. All the best in that drawing course. I hope you have some good teachers there in that drawing course because that makes a big difference. Um, but that's going to be great that you're going to be in a live drawing course. And I hope you, you pick up a lot and your drawings improve. Ernest says, hi, guys. Hi, Ernest. All right. So more on this perspective, they're asking if we can do that next week. We're probably, it might be something that we do maybe next season. Uh, I think we kind of got our, we each kind of have our little themes going this season. And perspective, uh, we there are lessons here on YouTube that uh, are part of the virtual instructor that, that do cover perspective. And there are several lessons on the website that cover perspective too that aren't on YouTube. So you, you might can check those out in the meantime. But I like the idea of doing some live instruction with the perspective as well so you guys can ask questions, so you can get some clarification. Uh, yeah, we might have to do maybe a special, some special live broadcast for that because that really doesn't 
the more I think about it, the more it doesn't really it really doesn't fall into the realm of getting sketchy. Not necessarily, but it could no. still be a uh, sort of a like you getting, said a special. A I love the idea. Special. A getting, you know, you a remember, Christmas special. Do you remember when we were younger and you know you're watching TV and this is back before people knew what was coming on next. Yeah, right. You know, and yeah. uh, unless you had TV Guide, which was a magazine, a paper magazine. Mm-hmm. And, but sometimes you'd be watching TV and then this show would go off and then all of a sudden this special logo would come on and spin towards the middle of the scene uh, of, of the TV. Do you, do you remember that? Oh, yeah. I used to get so excited. I would never have any idea what was we going were, on. We were programmed for that excitement. But I do remember um, one time that special logo came on and it, it did the little swirl and the music played and then Superman came on, the movie. With oh, yes. Marie. Oh, yes. Oh, man. I and you didn't so know it was coming. I didn't know it was coming, and I probably had to go to bed anyway. <laughs> you know, I think I was a really young kid, but uh, I remember that happening. Now, this door is a white door, but don't think that the shadow's not pretty strong on there just because it's a, a whitish object. And you're getting quite a range of value with just the HB pencil. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, it's not, you know, not all HBs are, are alike. You know, some seem to get really dark. And and I almost wonder if they're mislabeled sometimes. Well, the paper makes a difference, too. That's true. And I know you know that, but I'm just pointing and that out. And this is pulling, people. you know, this is drawing paper, not like a notebook or computer paper. So it's going to pull a good bit of, uh, good bit of tooth off of here. Oh, Jen says, I loved when the spinning thing came on TV. She remembers ha, ha, it. Ha, ha, ha. It said special, and it kind of had a, a repetitive, you know, it repeated the word special as it spun around. Kind of like a trail. Those were the good days. I guess they were good days. Now we know what, now we can watch whatever we want whenever we want. <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> And what's interesting is well, uh, now we can now we can search for what we want to watch for hours whenever we want. Doesn't mean we watch anything. Exactly. That's Sometimes the I think less choices was better. It is. I better. was more easily satisfied. Now I'm so picky. You know, they've done studies um, of places that offer like ice cream, lots of different I, flavors of I, ice, I ice cream. I can tell you an, an an anecdote about um, the city of New Orleans. They have what's called. Uh, Roman, I think it's Roman taffy. It's what uh-huh. it's called down there. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's a oh, wonderful yeah. taffy. And uh, we always get it when we go because my son's name is Roman, of course. But um, the man that started it, I think he started in the 1920s, and he wasn't allowed to go to school because he was disabled. Mm-hmm. And uh, schools didn't make provisions for students like that. Yeah. So he started his own business selling taffy when he was yeah, about right. like, in it, for you guys who are from New Orleans, you know the story, and New I'm going to mess it up. Yeah. yeah from If you're from... Um, Louisiana, then uh, you probably know the story. But in any case, he started a taffy business, you know, in a wagon. I think he had like a donkey pulling a wagon. Yeah. And he sold chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. He was mm-hmm. making money, doing really well for a teenager. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah. And uh, talk about the, uh, you know, the gumption and stick to itiveness it took yeah. to do that. Yeah. But um, then he expanded his flavors and added a bunch and found he was making less money because people took longer to decide. Yeah. Yeah. They would still buy it, but they had to stand there for a little bit longer and, and hold up the line. So he went back to three flavors. Yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah, I, I, that's a thing, apparently. So now, you know, if you're one of those people that turn on Netflix or whatever, and you just go on, you spend 20 minutes trying to figure out what you're going to watch. It's 20 minutes of your life. You're it never going to get back again, you know? Yeah, it is. When I'd probably be okay with the first thing that popped up. I don't know. Um, you would have in a different decade, you know? But now we've been trained i guess to narrow it down to the the best possible choice of all the thousands of choices before we commit ourselves okay one question here sure. is that an hb pencil and it is it is um sarah asks is this a reoccurring live every wednesday if so i'm so happy i'm so glad to hear that sarah yeah. we we do this every wednesday during a season so right. we'll, we'll do 10 episodes then we'll take a few weeks off, and then we'll come back. But the live lessons over at thevirtualinstructor.com are every Wednesday, and they're an hour long, and they're much slower. Um, you know, we're not creating sketches over there. We're going through the entire process of creating a piece of art. 
Uh, but yeah, this is this is every week during the season, and this might be episode six. I this, think that's, yeah, I think it's six. This is my third drawing in the season. And have I done three drawings? I think I you have, I have. I, because the you, cherry, you started the ladybugs and the sloth. Yeah, yeah so, that's right. Yeah, wow, this season's going by quick. It really is. Um, let's see. We got a question. What areas are light and midtones? Uh, the lighter, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Well, what areas are light and midtones? I'd say in the background, of course, there's half of it is a, is is in the is a tint on the lighter half of the scale. I would call this back here a midtone, mm-hmm. and then most of the keys are either lights or darks with not a lot of midtone. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of midtone right in here, and then and then there's still quite a bit, I guess, um, on the. Uh, on the lock itself or the, the doorknob. Now, I like to think yeah. of values more of tints and shades. They're either the lighter half or the darker half because I'm not real sure where the lights transition into the mids and that transitions into the dark. So it's a gray area. It is, oh, it's a gray area. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I would say that this value back here is somewhere around the center or very slightly to the lighter half. I would call this the last tint last tent on a value yeah, scale. Yeah, very much a last that's, my, that's That's close to the middle value. Yeah, it's close to a middle value. But you don't need to get wrapped up in labeling things too much. No, and know? it's all it's, relative. Your drawing can right. be all lighter than mine, and the values can still be arranged in a way that they look great, or or even a little darker than than mine or than the than the photo reference, and it still look great. As long as the the darks in the reference are still the darkest darks in your drawing. And ask, do you ever use graphite powder? And I have, and um, I use it in the realistic pencil drawing course, and I use it in uh, pencil drawing the guide to graphite, which is another course. Um, it's interesting I, you brought that up. I thought about bringing some. Oh, did you? And I just doing, some. and just to, like kind of dust in the background with it before I started. Yeah, I thought about that. It's a good idea. It would I mean, have saved a, a little idea. time, but I was afraid that not enough people would be able to you know, to replicate that at home. Yeah. Um, I've got a jar of powdered graphite. You can see it up there. Oh, yeah. Your, it, my I'll graphite came out all. of your jar because yeah, yeah. you've got so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never use it all. Um, but, yeah, graphite powder is great for creating that uh, more of a neutral base uh, to draw on and then erase out. So, yeah, it's great. Um, but it is a little messy. It's a little hard to control. Uh, let's you want see. to breathe it or anything like that. All right, Dana says object pairs for still life drawing compositions: a book and a lamp or candle. I like that. Butter and a knife. Okay, I'm thinking about bread and butter, but then I wanted to include a knife as well. And I'm asking myself: is that too many objects? A peanut, is that three things? Peanut and shells, like the peanuts and then the shells. Oh, that that's would a good be idea. great, that's and that's really more organic because I've been doing a lot of sort of, uh, you know, industrial. Um, objects, man-made objects, and so maybe something more organic like peanuts or bread and butter. An apple and an apple core, an ink bottle and a pen, yo-yo and jacks, bowl and a spoon, a potted plant and a watering can. Boy, oh, she went, gosh, she went off with the brainstorm. You're going right to have there. to write, the, I'm going to write these down. That is a serious brainstorm. Yeah, right there. We, we need to extend this season now. We I'm, do. Not, I'm not running out of <laughs> stuff at all. <laughs> I need to write just these my down, own really, imagination. All I can ever come up with are animals. <laughs> I know. It's always an write animal. these down, Matt. Uh, well, the cherries weren't animals, so That's they're true. different, but they're still living. Yeah, um, you do like the living subjects. Living. I like the. Uh, now. Yeah. In fact, they're eaten now. Um, <laughs> now you're living. Let's see. Brent does art. Says I have a feeling Ashley will be picking up that layout pencil soon, waiting for or wanting the darker values. Yeah, you may be right. Right. But you know, I, I I've do got 24 point out, minutes to go. We'll yeah, see. he's got plenty of time. Ashley is just. I feel like I've been moving at this. lightning speed this time. You are moving at lightning and speed, and it's because I started shading early. Exactly. I think I am uh, going to have to refine my getting sketchy process and quit saving shading as a sort of a separate step, and just yeah. start mashing them together. You know, the fear is that you get something in the wrong place. And you've got a lot of shading down, and you have to move it. But, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to it be perfect. Have These to are be exactly sketches, yes. right? Um, let's see here. How do you make your decision to pick up the motives for learning slash practice dash sketches? Sometimes I get wrapped up finding the right motive to learn from. 
Do you understand what buddy's the right asking, motive, asking like there? your inspiration? The if reason? you clarify, if you is that the motivation or the subject? Or just to clarify a little bit there, buddy, and one can answer that. Yeah, for we'd you. love to. Um, okay. Did you convert the image to black and white, or is it naturally more grayscale? No, I I, uh, I converted it to black and white since we were going to draw in black and white, just so we wouldn't have to um, judge those really strong yellows or brassy colors mm -hmm. that were in there. I thought that would be good. Did you uh, adjust anything in Photoshop with the values? Not at all. Contrast or anything? Like Not at all. I just changed it. Just changed it to uh, black and white. Now, these teeth I'm not being very careful on. I'm, I'm kind of just referring to them and making them up as I go. So I may have a few more, a few less. Um, and I'm okay with that. So we'll see. All right, looks like my lips down here is a little bit off. I've got too much negative space in here. Um, I'm not can. I'm not even sure if it, if it's, if, it, if it's detrimental to the drawing, but I'll try to adjust it just a little bit. Buddy clarifies, uh, they mean the subject. How do you choose a subject? Okay. Well, um, that's a good question. For me, for this this draw these drawings here, I've, I have chosen a theme to help direct me, and that are that is pairs. You know, like ob similar objects, and not similar, but objects that have a have a relationship. So um, that helps to eliminate a lot of choices. And I guess for me, when it comes to um, choosing a subject, it's not so much about deciding what I want to draw, but eliminating things to draw. Because I was trained to believe that you know you can spin yourself around in a circle, open your eyes in any direction, and the Whatever is in front of your field of vision is worth drawing. And that was just kind of the philosophy that I was trained under um, in college. And so I think everything's worth discovering in a, in a you know, running through the filter of our mind and, uh, and seeing where we end up. So. Very good advice. And she was writing or um, they were writing motive but they meant motif i think oh, motif. sarah sarah has come in and said motif okay, i think good. is what yeah. they mean i think that, you're right that makes sense um and you you brilliantly described a motif okay good <laughs> by talking about your you know your two your your pairs that's right. a motif right that's a, it, it, it's something it's a thread to hopefully carry at least my drawings through the whole season mm -hmm. and it's also what people desire when they have lost um, some of their teeth, maybe in old age, they want motif. Motif. <laughs> yeah, motif. <laughs> yeah. I'm concentrating over here. Matt's going to uh, My son me. lost a tooth this past week, his first tooth, and before he had less teeth, no, before he had motif, now he has less teeth. <laughs> All right, Marley asks, how do you make the shading for the background look less messy? Thank you for this well, lesson. Well, um, you can use more layers, you know, change in directions, mm -hmm. and try to keep your strokes close together and not have big white gaps between them, um, something I'm guilty of sometimes when I'm moving fast. And then you can also use a paper towel or a stump, mm -hmm. paper, rolled up paper to blend with. And I thought about doing that, and I still may still may do a little bit of smudging around just because um, if there's a time, we'll see. So I like the way you're doing, you're making that key three-dimensional. It was two-dimensional, and then you're just adding another plane, a right. series of planes, and uh, all of a sudden... 3D key. Mostly, yeah. Mostly just, it's a it's like tree rings, right? I'm just following the line that's already there, mostly. You know, not all of the planes show up, so you have to be sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. The planes that kind of face upward for me are the ones that are not showing up. So I just don't, you know, don't reveal those as much. All right. I think part of my issue here is the width of the key. So I'm going to beef it up a little bit. We've got 18 minutes left, and then I'll probably stop making very many proportional changes and just start 
working more and more on the shading. And this is the really dark key, which does have a little bit of a shine, a reflection up here. That's kind of cool. Now, I like to think the secret to creating the illusion of reflective surfaces is all in the contrast of value. That's, yeah. So we've got dark values. A lot of times we have dark values right next to a really light value when you're dealing with a reflective surface like metal. You can see that in the keys, especially where he's working right now. Yeah, it's going to start to happen up here. Dark value right next to a light value. Now, this, um, this key that I'm working on right now is, I mean, more so than the first that I've already started shading is super dark in most of its areas. So I'm going to go ahead and, and give this um, the business with the number two pencil and I'll do a little sharpen action here. And then I'll be able to go back into the other objects that I had previously started shading earlier on and um, refine those values according to this key. I can see a little bit of uh, variation down here in the lower part of the key. It's not quite as quite black everywhere down there. So I'll put the black spots in first and then just get as close to black as I can without touching it um, for the rest of the key. It may show up and the values may be so close together, it may not. All right. Uh... Enrique says, don't you think that the door lock is smaller in the drawing than it should be? Thanks. Maybe. Um, yeah, the doorknob might be a little bit smaller, but you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's I'm one of those sure. things we'll where, um, you know, you're creating a drawing and uh, in, in normal life, no one would see the photo reference because <laughs> there's always going to be, there's gonna, always going to be um, things that you can find different about the photo in the drawing. Uh, I might not have said that right, but I the think everybody understood what I meant. reference is just for you and me. Right. It's a reference. Nobody else needs to see it. And as long as you're communicating the subject, um, that's what's most important. Um, and like I said, there's always going to be some, I don't want to call them mistakes. I would just call them evidence that a human made. Discrepancies. I yeah. like to call and, them discrepancies. When I go to a museum or a gallery and I look at paintings, those are the things that I enjoy most about those paintings. They're the, they're, it's the evidence that a human made those paintings. That is really what's most interesting to me. Um, and, you know, you're seeing this live in real time develop and uh, you have the benefit of having the photo right next to the drawing. Now, when we are, when we are creating these drawings, we are having to look up at our reference. We're having to move our head and then go back to the paper and we don't have that benefit. We can look at the computer screen and make comparisons like you do, but we're, we don't have the same benefit as you do. So this actually helps you learn how to draw. So the fact that you're seeing these discrepancies means that you're paying close attention to what is in the reference and um, you're noticing those discrepancies because you're paying such close attention. And it's the same type of attention that you would need to give to your photo reference if you're working from a photo when you create your own drawing. So it's great that you're seeing those uh, differences but also don't get too hung up on them because, you know, in the end, it's really all about the drawing. In this case, it's not so much about the drawing, but more so about the exercise of drawing. The process. Right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ocean Drock says, do you have a video on how to use Prismacolor pencils when drawing an orange? 
And I have a uh, live lesson series where I combine Prismacolor markers with colored pencils. And in that series, I am drawing blood oranges, which are super cool oranges. They're, they're orange on the outside, just like yeah. an orange should be. You notice I said orange too. Orange. orange. And on the inside, though, they're like uh, a deep red, kind of like red. a grapefruit. Uh, yeah. So it's really cool, a combination of colors. But that's a live lesson series. There is probably a time lapse of that on YouTube. It's not the full lesson series, of course, but I think there's a time lapse of that process broken down. So not Prisma colors from start, to, not Prisma colored pencils from start to finish, but Prisma color markers and colored pencils. All right. And so someone else around points, a little bit. points out, going back to the doorknob and the lock, um, that by making it a little bit smaller, it actually adds to the illusion of space and mm, enhances yeah. the perspective. And uh, I, I agree with I that. I like the way you're yeah. thinking. That's and it's right. also a little bit less refined than the keys that are in the foreground. That's also helping things at this particular moment yeah, in true. the drawing. We'll probably stay that way a little bit. But the, the lock is the... Um, Supporting actor here. Yes. Literally. It's supporting the <laughs> keys as well. And Brent Does Art says it's getting it's starting to get that metallic look to it. And yeah, I think that that's due that's in large part to the contrast and value. Still got about 11 minutes, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, you are on top of this one. You're rolling with it. Might be able to actually pause and look at it a couple times. <laughs> Such a, uh, you know, most, I would say most beginner artists would look at a subject like this and be overwhelmed and worried. Yeah, it just looks like there's so much going right. on out there, you but know. You're definitely showing us how a seemingly complex subject can be broken down into a convincing illusion in a drawing in a very short period of time, and that complexity is something that we shouldn't fear. No, you know, um, you don't draw the whole thing at once. It's not like a photo. You don't have to make all this happen at once, right? It's just one mark at a time. So that's what I try to tell myself with a complicated subject, you know, or, or just like any other, any other task in life, multi-step tasks. You just have to take one step at a time. I know it's a cliche, but it's important to remember that when we're drawing. And you still are working with the HP pencil. I'm, you know, this HP pencil is plenty dark. Yeah, right? I'm in, impressed with the range that it's you're getting. It's plenty dark. Right but, you know, it's not just an HP pencil. It's a Ticonderoga HP pencil. You love those. I just think they're superior. It's just the superior, I guess, company for writing pencils, you know. So Mr. Dixon, who started the company, you know, he started out making these pencils in his mom's kitchen. You you talk like you baking them in the with Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon back in the eighteen hundreds. <laughs> so. I imagine some some guy with a bow tie. Yeah, definitely. Just, Probably got those weird, weird little straps on his on his right, sleeves like, like bartenders from the saloon. Quartet. You know, so he can work. Well, in his... Today we're gonna make some pencils in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pencils were in eighteen hundreds. Uh, hey, Bobby, can you hand me that? Lead people over probably there. took better care of their pencils because they weren't just laying around everywhere because they were handmade. Yeah. And you probably used them until there was almost almost nothing left. Oh, buddy says yesterday I finally finished the peony. Oh yeah, the or peony. Peony, however you want to, which is a flower for those of you who are educated like I am, and uh, I'm very <laughs> happy with it. Would would never could have done it without the live sessions. Thanks. Absolutely fantastic to hear that, buddy. Um, I definitely was glad to be finished with the drawing. And I can't, I still haven't framed it. You should it. show that drawing yeah. to uh, the folks here on Getting Sketchy. I should, maybe next Just week. Being that it was a recent, the, uh, recently completed, you know, uh, yeah, drawing. Yeah, I should, I should do more of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have the overhead camera on right now on my, my end of the studio. So maybe we'll do that next week. Let's see. Maybe I'll do a flower next week. Or getting Just sketchy. change it up a little bit. And then I can show that flower. We change it oh, up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you know, uh, well, wait another a minute. That's still a living subject. Yeah, no, yeah. It's not changing it up at it's all. It's not changing it too <laughs> dramatically. But maybe I'll try to use another colored medium. That would be cool. And then Seems you could show the difference between 45 minutes and 20 hours <laughs> <laughs> on a colored that, pencil flower drawing. That peony, I think, has at least 20 hours, maybe 24. 
some of my pencil lines, I'm just kind of sliding them around like one pencil width or another, back and forth a little bit. So there is so much going on in this uh, door handle. It's hard to decide exactly you know, how much to use. I also want to point out something here real quick for the folks. Um, yeah, outside of the picture plane, you can notice that the ellipse you drew for the part of the doorknob that meets the door goes outside of the picture plane. I'm not sure if you mentioned that when you were doing well, it. Well, I didn't. I actually just did that a moment ago because I was thinking about extending my picture plane. You know, I did start okay. my door gotcha. knob just a little bit to the left. Not that it matters. I, I mean, gotcha. I can leave it that way. Okay. But I thought about extending the picture plane. And I, I'll go ahead and tell you. I think I'm going to extend the picture plane upward a little bit. You know, this is a little bit tight in here for me. And I was looking at that actually before the drawing started and thinking, why didn't I edit that in Photoshop? But I didn't. So I think we're going to edit it right here. And the reason why you would want more space up there is because that's just a lot of visual weight that's yeah, pulling the viewer. It up is. It's a lot of tension point. going right into that spot. Yeah. So we're going to stretch this out just a little bit more. And when, that's, what, uh, that's why we draw and sketch, um, before, pro hopefully, um, before we make finished works of art. You know, I'm a big believer in sketching a subject before I sit down and try to um, you know, recreated in all of its, uh, its full detail and glory sometimes. So it's good to it's good to work with a subject a little bit in a composition, a little bit in a in a drawing before maybe switching to a more permanent or time consuming medium like painting. That's just my habit because I'm an oil painter. And just to go back to why you're making that decision, uh, whenever you have objects that are close to the edge of the picture plane meaning there's not an, a lot of negative space between where that object ends and the edge of the picture mm. plane, it can pull a viewer's eye. It's like visual weight. Right. Um, and also, if you have an object that goes off the picture plane just barely, and you know there's a there's just a little bit more of it, that can have the same effect as well. It so, creates tension. Right. Uh, so so I like that a better. little bit better. That's much better. Yeah. yeah, just adding that extra half inch or so. Um, now that does probably bring my composition into a non-standard rectangle, which uh, is okay if you don't mind having frames custom made. It costs a little bit more, so I like to usually work inside of a standard rectangle. But this is, this is uh, I actually kind of like that. I kind of like how tall it looks now. Uh, buddy asked, "Do you draw or paint every day?" Um, most days, yes. Yeah, for me, it's. Not drawing or painting every day, but it's something art related, uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm either uh, editing videos, voicing over the videos, answering emails, uh, comments, whatever, um, if I'm not drawing or painting. But it's always something art related. My whole life is art related as, as well as Ashley's. Mm -hmm. So um, may not pick up a pencil every single day, but we're we're doing something art related every single day. I like to say that uh, I got in trouble mostly in art class when I was in high school. And my punishment for that is to spend the rest of my life in an art class. <laughs> it's a great punishment. And that little bit of the door that you're adding up there is making a big difference to, to it's, the composition. Yeah, it's a kind of a little directional there. Yeah. Somewhat. That information is needed up there in that space. Wish I brought, I think I will bring it down a little further though. What do we got? Four minutes left? Plenty of time. It's a suggestion. It's a yeah, suggestion. Right. It's a suggestion. If we need, well, we can go until what, about 7.30? Yeah, you got 10 minutes. Okay. You got uh, over 10 minutes. We just need that time to set up for the live lesson, which yeah. tonight you might need a little bit more yes, time. Yes, I do. So. All right. Yeah, all of this without the general's layout pencil, it is impressive. Mm -hmm. All right. Just even out my shading a little bit more up here, and then I'm going to have to decide... Um, what's the last thing that I have time to do? Let's see. Well, this key's got too much white space on it. Some of these planes are in a little bit of a shadow. 
Um, yeah, and of Christine is just pointing out, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm looking at the bright highlight of the edge of the jagged key and wondering if you should erase more. Yeah, I'm trying and, to get a little bit more of that out. Um, the jagged smeared. key, though, I think the jagged, I think the, is there a special key called a jag key? This key. That's a jagged key, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit lost in there, but, you know... I got a tool for you. I'm going to bring it over to you. Is it the electric eraser? Yeah. yeah. All right. Go. Okay, we'll get this we'll get this bad boy in there in just a second. So, I think <laughs> one of the keys is to just be a little bit sharper along the edge of the, along the jagged edge in the dark side. There we go. I have never used one of these. Oh, it's powerful. It's very powerful. Oh. It just, it just cut a hole in my page. Yes, it can. It can do that. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. It's, you're going to buy one now, aren't you? As soon as I leave here. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, that's, wow, look at this that. is an electric eraser. So uh, it has a vinyl or plastic eraser in the tip, and you just hold the button down, and it goes straight to work and erases with Usually really I have to precision. erase that out and then work back into it on both sides yeah, it's with, great. The, with the more accurate value. And I just got a tool uh, you delivered. Know, this is a problem. I want to do more than I need to. I, got like, a new I just tool. want to try it on all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I, well, I got a new tool to play with uh, that was delivered the other day. I haven't even taken it out of the box. I mean, I haven't even opened the, the brown box uh, to take it out oh, yet. Yeah. But it's a scratch tool that will allow you to go into colored pencil and remove the colored pencil. So you can make white marks over the top of colored pencil drawings as long as you worked on a white sheet oh, wow. of paper. Uh, I can't wait to try it out. I'm just wondering if it has the potential of tearing the paper, I guess I'll find that out, but I think I'm going to, I think it's going to be a revelation much like the electric eraser. Yeah. That is going to really change things for colored pencil work. Oh yeah. Oh, here comes the highlights. Oh yeah. You know, I almost now, brought a little bit of temper paint for this kind of thing. You combine the powdered graphite with you know, a range of uh, different value or, or different softness of uh, graphite pencils and the electric eraser with the needed eraser. What else do you need? That's you don't true. need anything else. I mean, it, oh, he's going crazy with the highlights now. <laughs> I'm addicted to this tool. It, it is, it is, it had, I mean, you can just put a little spot down there. I don't know if you saw Holy mackerel. the eraser, how much of the eraser came out, but it is literally like two centimeters left in there. I mean, <laughs> you mean I've been using a lot of it? Oh, no, no, no. You what haven't. You I have. Oh, okay. That's what. That's just what's left. That's what's left. I, I've got more of these things. Gosh, I'm going to have to order 50 of these. Yeah, each each little eraser thing is this long. Oh, it's oh about, wow. It's about an inch. All right, well, time's up, and... I'm not we'll have down. the timer off. We'll turn that timer off, get it out of the way. So if you want to make yeah, any finishing go. touches, of course, you have the option to do that. We'll clean this up a little bit just so we can better read our values in there. Um, Jen asked, what is that colored pencil tool called? I wish I could tell you. I actually saw an ad for it and ordered it from the ad. So I don't know what the name of it is, um, but... I will definitely be using it in a future video at some point, and I will have the proper terminology when that happens. But uh, it's some kind of scratching tool. It looks interesting. My concern, of course, is that it's going to tear the paper. I don't see how it's going to lift the colored pencil material without digging into the paper, but we'll see what happens. Um, but Thomas adds, Matt, I use that tool, and it works great on colored pencils and has never torn my paper. So there you go. So I can't wait to try it out. Uh, I do like to use Stonehenge paper, which is softer um, with colored pencils. Mm -hmm. 
And so we'll we'll see. We'll it's see. But uh, it, it I'm I'm wanting it to work, of course. But I also kind of have a pessimistic attitude with these kind of things until I'm proved wrong. <laughs> right. So, uh, sometimes advertising can be just that. Yeah. It is the slice tool. Patsy is pointing out, is it the slice tool? It is the slice tool, the yes. So we'll see. As, as I mentioned, I haven't, I haven't tried it yet. So uh, I can't say it's still in the box. It's still in it's still in the brown box, so it's in the box inside. So you don't of the really box. even know what's in. There. I don't even know what it looks like. Yet. <laughs> okay, it's been sitting on a dining room table, you know, since I received it. Yeah. All right. Well, I I think this one is as done as it's going to get in this uh, this time that we have tonight. So it looks fantastic. I hope uh, you guys had a good drawing experience out there. I enjoyed this. It was definitely a challenge. Uh, I had to make a couple of uh, mid-course corrections in the in proportion, but I will say that I believe, um, given the complexity of the subject, starting the shading early was probably the right move um, for me in this case. There's a limit how much you can move stuff around, um, but it also kind of keeps us going, kind of keeps, mm -hmm. thing, keeps things moving. So it's possible that I will shade early and shade often um, here on Getting Sketchy. You in the future you have had your own drawing uh revelation here yeah i learned yes. something i learned something and you know matt i actually draw this way a lot ordinarily yeah. but for whatever reason um on the show i tend to just kind of <laughs> split it into two i don't know if it's because um sometimes i do that with my own students so we can just kind of yeah. have less to think about at a time so we can right. focus on proportion then Forget about that and focus on value. So right. it's, it's good for instruction. It's good for learning. Uh -huh. But for a timed drawing, I think it's probably good to just kind of tackle both of those things together. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. So I think it. I learned something Do it the way today. you would do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, let's see. Here, real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Lori says, love the composition. I agree. In fact, I think all of Ashley's drawings for this season of Getting Sketchy have been composition-based. They've all been very, very good compositions. Oh, thank you so much for that because I've been taking all these pictures myself. Yeah, they're really good. I struggled all last season. I felt like I spent too much time looking for the right photos. Oh gosh, and I thought, yeah. you know, I'm going to, I tell my students all the time, you know, you need to really make it your own. And, and then I'm not doing that all the time. So I decided to try to, try to make um, kind of at least these drawings uh, you'd be part of my process from start to finish. So I really appreciate your, uh, your kind words there. Um, Estelle says, see you in a half an hour. We will see you virtually in a half an hour there too, Estelle. Um, let's see. Patsy says, I love it on drafting film. It will not work on all papers. And she's talking about the slice tool. Okay. And I can see how it would work on drafting film, but also not work on all papers. And I haven't even opened the box. <laughs> so, <laughs> I imagine it's just a really thin cutter. Um, let's see. Uh, Melody says, Ashley, this is really nice. I agree. Jen says, amazing drawing. Ashley. Thank um, you. Tom Clark says, love it. Uh, well, I got to tell some you. comments mixed in Matt about the slice me tool. with that eraser. I got to tell you. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, Ashley, what's your opinion on carbon pencils? They seem to be superior to regular graphite pencils. What do you think? You know, I haven't... I, I haven't really been using them, Matt. I know you use carbon pencils sometimes. I've used them a few times. I feel like I'm, my experience is too limited because all I've done is make marks with one to see what it feels like and really haven't made a completed uh, work of art with them. And I'll tell you New Force, who's asking this question, um, I think the carbon pencils are really a, more heavily dependent on the surface that you work on. I feel like they pick up a little bit more of the texture and I think um, maybe some smoother surfaces are better for carbon pencils. In fact, I kind of like the way carbon pencils look on newsprint paper more so than how they look on a higher quality drawing paper. So, hmm. uh, but carbon pencils are a little bit more difficult to erase, but uh, they are they produce really nice dark, rich blacks which you can't get with graphite. Right. So that's the advantage to carbon pencils. Uh, let's see. Ashley, it looks good. Patsy says, um, Tom says, awesome. Drill Thank Box. You, Love that name there. Thank you, as always. I learned so much. Drawing is finished. Continues to poke at it for an hour. That's a total. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what we do around here. Can't uh, what help about it. about on Bristol paper 
Uh, this is new for us asking about carbon pencils. Actually, I can't think of a time when I've used carbon pencils on Bristol paper, either the, the smooth or vellum surface. So I can't really comment on that, but that's something for me to investigate further, of course. Uh, maybe we'll do next week's lesson uh, or, you know, getting sketchy here on with carbon pencil. Yeah. I want to use carbon pencil, but I also am kind of working with color a lot for the getting sketchies. That's true. Uh, kind of to offset. It's your motif. Yeah, it's my motif kind of, although the sloth was in black and white. That's true. Uh, anyway. Well, I'm going to still work in black and white on my next um, on my next drawing as well, but I think I'm going to use black paper in a white medium. So it'll be a little bit different um, for me since I've been using a white surface mostly this season all right then um i think that was the last comment uh that was pertinent to this all right so, so i guess we'll just go ahead and switch out over here you got anything else to add no i don't believe so thank you guys all right well thanks for joining us this evening i hope you guys enjoyed it i definitely enjoyed watching it and reading your comments uh, it's always fun to connect with you guys here live on Getting Sketchy. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We're going to do this again next Wednesday night. And if you want to be notified about it before we go live, uh, then sign up for our email list. To be on the email list, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below for the free course videos. You'll get free course videos and eBooks. You'll also get a series of uh, emails with uh, links to free lessons. Um, and you'll be notified when we go live here on Getting Sketchy. Again, it will be next Wednesday. Subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, check out three course videos and eBooks. I already said that, so I won't say it again. Um, Ashley, got anything to add? I just uh, want to apologize again for having my head in the camera so much. I realize that that is prime <laughs> advertising space. So if anyone would like their logo back here for two weeks from now, otherwise I'm probably going to just write getting sketchy on there for you guys. Thanks. Yes. Um, and that advertising space is not for sale. So uh, this is this is YouTube, but there's a whole world of uh, people out there that would actually probably uh, yeah no don't do that no, I'm, respond. I'm not really going to put anything in the back of my head so <laughs> that's not already there that i may not know about maybe a pair of eyes i'll put a pair of eyes that'll keep the that'll keep the creatures away and just walk into your classroom backwards one day <laughs> that's right that would be hilarious i got my eye on you uh, did we discuss one time maybe making cardboard cut cutouts of ourselves and <laughs> that's right. in front of the classroom? well now that we've been teaching you know some of us have been teaching with zoom yeah. That we can do that. All we need to do is put a microphone behind that cardboard cutout and maybe, you know, a, a motor and a single arm that will go up and down pointing at different parts of the board. You can do it all from home. Uh, okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and sign out with that. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Everybody stay safe and healthy. Um, for those of you going over to the virtual instructor, we'll see you in a minute. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody.